Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Space News Pod, a show about SpaceX, NASA, and spaceflight. I'm your host, Will Walden, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about the Artemis One mission, the SLS launch, and it's going to be happening Saturday the 3rd between 2.17 and 4.17 p.m. EDT. So there's a two-hour launch window for the SLS rocket with the Orion capsule on top of it. NASA had to scrub the launch attempt on August 29th, 2022 because of a few things during the launch attempt teams were not able to chill down the four rs 25 engines to approximately minus 420 degrees fahrenheit with engine three showing higher temperatures than the other engines teams also saw a hydrogen leak on a component of the tail service mass umbilical quick disconnect called the purge can and managed the leak by manually adjusting propellant flow rates so what they're going to do is they're going to look at this data that they had from the 29th perspective launch teams will modify and practice propellant loading procedures to follow a procedure similar to what they uh, successfully performed during the green run at NASA's Stennis Space Center Mississippi and the updated procedures will perform the chill down tests of the engines also called the kickstart bleed test 30 to 45 minutes earlier in the countdown during the liquid hydrogen fast fill liquid phase for the core stage and teams are also configuring platforms on pad 39b uh, to enable engineers access to the purge can on the tail service mass umbilical just in case they need to get in there and fix some stuff before the launch remember they do have two hours to fix things if something does go awry or if the if the weather goes a little bit funky they can just hold off for a little bit they can pause the countdown anytime they want to say if they have five seconds left on the countdown everything looks good and then something goes weird anything can go weird they can pause the countdown and they can recycle and then they can get back into the swing of things and launch this thing on saturday hey real quick if you could take a second and hit the subscribe button not only does it help the channel a little bit but it helps you more than it helps me because youtube will see that you like space flight content and it will give you more space flight content in the algorithm it'll push stuff to your page that shows you stuff from spacex nasa all the space flight stuff that you'll ever want and if you like the video that kind of doubles it so if you could do those two things it would help me a little bit it would help you a lot Thanks very much. In case something does go wrong, they have teams in place to mitigate those circumstances as well. So meteorologists at the U.S. Space Force's Launch Delta 45 um, are predicting pretty decent weather for Saturday, but not 100%. Rain showers are expected, and they're going to be sporadic, and they're going to kind of play it by ear for this launch on Saturday. So I'm hoping we get a really good launch. What do you think? Leave a comment below. Let me know if you think this rocket is gonna launch on Saturday. And if it does launch, is it gonna be a successful launch? Because remember, this is just a test rocket. This isn't the full final rocket. And they're gonna gather data from whatever happens during this launch in order to do the Artemis 2 launch and the Artemis 3 launch. So let me know in the comments what you think. Pad 39B is where the SLS rocket is standing right now, and they had a little bit of an issue. So I'm going to go back and say, okay, so they had an issue. Engine three was having a little bit of a of an issue, and there was a sensor that may be malfunctioning. And there was a uh, press conference the other day with some NASA officials that basically stated, well, we saw that this sensor is kind of messing up, and we don't really want to take it back to the vehicle assembly building because that would take a lot of time. That would take a lot of a lot of effort, and they kind of dismissed this sensor, right? But if something were to go wrong, if something were to leak, if something were to go absolutely horrible in this, basically just dismissed it, eh, whatever, not a big deal. No big deal, this, this happens all the time, okay? So I've seen it all, I've seen a lot. Yeah, we don't really, we don't really care that much. We're gonna continue our operations and work within those guidelines and kind of figure out what's going on with the sensor hopefully before the launch if they can do it on the launch pad but if not they're gonna still do it it's kind of like let's just launch this sucker and see what happens so it's gonna be happening september 3rd 2022 between 2 17 and 4 17 p.m eastern time somewhere in that window and the things we have to worry about uh mainly is the weather but also that sort of sensor issue that was going on there uh it's going to be a 37 day 23 hour 53 
minute mission duration. It used to be 40 some days, but it got uh, shrunk down a little bit to 37 days because it's launching a few days later. Um, it's going to begin a retrograde orbit around the moon. It's basically going to go around the moon, whip around the moon, get some more uh, gravity from the moon, get the gravity assist, and swing back down towards Earth, launching back down at 25,000 miles per hour. And it's going to be coming in hot into the atmosphere at 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And the Orion capsule will be going about 40,000 miles away from the moon. And that's 30,000 miles further than any human rated spacecraft without a space station away from the moon at this point. So this is going to be breaking records. This will be laying the framework for the Artemis 2 mission where two people will go and basically do the same mission, but with actual people. And Artemis 3 mission will land people on the surface of the moon again. So this is just the foundation for everything in the future. But we have to worry about that sensor that I talked about before. And there's also some other stuff we have to worry about. From the 45th Weather Squadron, it says the position of the Bermuda High will continue to be the main driver of our weather pattern through the next few days. The spaceport will see weak offshore flow continuing through Thursday with a gradual transition back to onshore flow Friday. So basically, we want to look at this right here. 40%. That means we have a 60% go rate for Saturday's flight on the 3rd. Primary concerns of this flight, cumulus cloud rule, uh, surface electric fields rule as well. So be worried about electricity in the air and also cumulus clouds. And if they were to launch into an electricity field, something could be happening, something could happen and could short out some systems on the rocket and other things could happen to it too. Static electricity is bad for a rocket. That's all we need to know. But we do have a 60% chance of a go for launch on Saturday, according to the weather. And I'm gonna take a look at Wonderground here. And this is the weather forecast for Saturday, 9.03. We have 2 p.m. when it's around 2 p.m. Partly cloudy, 88 degrees, feels like 90 eight degrees so it's gonna be really hot it's gonna feel really hot there well it's florida that happens right and then 24 percent chance of humidity so it looks like it's gonna be okay to launch at about 217 between two and four it's around the same right in this area between two and four so it looks like that's probably gonna be the clearest time of day to launch this thing and if all the systems check out if there are no leaks and if that sensor seems to be okay we're gonna get a launch of the Artemis 1 SLS rocket with the Orion capsule on top that will be orbiting the moon, coming back down to Earth in a, about 37 days, which is gonna be incredible.